Hello, good day, greetings and salutations to all, everywhere, and nowhere, here, now, is all that there is. I'm out tweeting and uh, realized that I really enjoy video blogging because it allows me to convey much, much more than I can in the text, textual word. So much is lost in transcription, as I like to say. And although this isn't as good as actual being each other's presence, this is as close as I can get at this time. Perhaps technology will allow us to beam, actually, more likely, perhaps my spiritual evolution will progress to the point where I'm able to teleport. I've experienced telepathy, telekinesis, clairvoyance, but uh, no teleportation. <sighs> Not within this same reality, at least. So, I just wanted to wish everybody the opportunity to experience everyday enlightenment. Um, and I say enlightenment is plural, as Suzuki Roshi would say sometimes. Uh, and uh, Jack Kornfield does a wonderful job of saying sometimes. Excellent teachers, um, people I'm very fond of. I pay homage to all the teachers of the past and of the present and of the future who are all here now. One day, today, is every day. Every day is today. All time, eternity, all space, infinity, all these amazing concepts and realities are planes and they all coincide or intersect at one point and that point is here now and whenever you see this you will see it if your mind is open and you allow your thoughts to pass over. Oh, there's the co-host, Jewel. Jewel, say hi. <laughs> She's camera shy. So am I. But I don't exist, so <laughs> I have the luxury of <laughs> not worrying about it. Um, if you allow the thoughts or feelings to just pass over as a clear blue sky has a puff of a cloud in it, your mind is infinitely and eternally expansive consciousness in all directions. Not just 360 degrees, but hemispherically. Uh, my geometry escapes me at the at the moment, I was trying to think of the equation for the uh, volume of a sphere, pi r squared. Uh, anyhow, tangents are one of my, <laughs> um, many of my gifts and, uh, or misfortunes, depending on 
who you are and where you are. But I assure you, ultimately, this is the opportunity to experience everything and everywhere. Grounded in my breath, Attachment to nothing. I'm truly present. I am. I am. And also, to really convey it, is silence. It is the only true communication of reality. All words create concepts and a dichotomy. There's a word, there's an anti-word. There's a speaker, there's a listener. When ultimately Everyday enlightenment, mercatory, is accepting everything. Again, semantics. But as close as I can say it, I can't say it. So I have to drop down a level to the plane in which I accept that, okay, I'll play the game that Dharma Mitra Jeff Stefani, and there's you, and that there's some separation. Because of the ego and its sense of separateness is very threatened by that idea because it is to the ego it equates death in no uncertain terms. That is, that is it. That is the basis of all fear. And that is what prevents consciousness from fully present here, now, consciousness, oneness. All these are synonyms for the same experience, but an experience cannot be transferred, translated, transcribed, traversed, transmutated, yes, transcended, That is my wish. Being a bodhisattva is nothing special. Truly just the opposite. It's the removal of all the added layers, peeling the onion, and as we peel it, we cry. And in the end, we're left with emptiness, which is I'm not planning on these I ams, because I know it's very in vogue to I am. I am that I am, that I am, I think, or something in the Bible. I actually never read the Bible. The most I've heard quoted is from books that I have that compare Hindu, Confucius, Taoist, Buddhist, and Jesus. And Eckhart Tolle is a wonderful, uh, much more learned in his form. 
of Eckhart Tolle. He's more learned and knowledgeable. Uh, taking the time to research. And that's important because if your experience every day enlightenment, the natural byproduct is seeing, experiencing, don't get caught up in the words. I'm getting caught up in the words a little bit. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Isn't that the worst possible uh, teaching method that there is? Watch me struggle. I struggle. I struggle. This is not struggling. This is being. This is everyday enlightenment. Yes, perhaps it's taken many lifetimes, and I've been a sp serious spiritual practitioner ever since that one time I took LSD for a year <laughs> when I was 18. And then stumbled upon Be Here Now by Ram Das, where he described his experience with Timothy Leary and LSD in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And I realized at that point that these chemically induced States of, states of exalted consciousness are ineffective. So I launched out on a course of vigorous action to seek and find for myself, as, as Richard Alpert, AKA Ram Dass did. But instead of going to India and finding uh, Nagars Nagarsadat, to, I, I'm sorry, Maharaji, Sargadatu. Um, I found Saramati and an introduction to the three jewels, the Buddha, the body, the Dharma, the speech, the Sangha. the heart, the community. And 15 years later, through really trying, trying to not try, wanting to not want, the paradoxes spun me into such a tizzy that I was convinced that eliminating my body was the only way, because I was in pain, and I couldn't take it. And I dreamed about en ending it for respite. And once I accepted that I'm going to die, that years of meditating and seeking bore fruit. And the ego died before this form died. And I was awoken to true insight into the state of absolute reality, entered the stream, broke the first three fetters, as called in Buddhism. And that makes you a bodhisattva. And if a drug addict white kid from Detroit can do it, 
You can do it. And you know the realization I had? That was it, beyond words. And once I tried to put some words in it, I couldn't believe that it was right there the whole time. It was touching the tip of my nose. It's on the tip of your nose. It's touching you. It is you. It's all around you. But it is only here now. Because the past and the future only exists when we engage with our ego and our thoughts. Consciousness and thoughts, that's a equal sign with a slash through it. They are not equal. I do, they're not synonymous. They're the antithesis. Mind and thinking, I'm looking at the clock and it's, I tend to ramble on. I just want everyone to know that I'm really glad that some people are taking the time to watch some of these videos and experience a little of my experience and hopefully or not hopefully but if you want to not want then just stop because you already are a bodhisattva covered with the layers of an onion and you don't have to peel them. They will fall off the moment you stop and experience emptiness, everything and nothing, shunyata, the primal void, the here and now, where the eternal meets the infinite. My realization is Holy sh shite! It, that's it. It that that would that's it. It's been right there all along. And I thought I had to go to China, Japan, India, Nepal to find it. Fortunately, Saramati said, "You'd probably be doing yourself a disfavor. You'd spent years learning the culture instead of experiencing what it is." to be a Buddhist, which is to go for refuge to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And so I did. And thus, I am. I have become. And yet, at the same time, I ceased the moment that the real I, my infinite eternal consciousness, which is neither born nor destroyed, nor here nor there, nor gone, nor taken away, those are all words Words are popping us out of being. Pure being has no words, has no dichotomy, but as a mentor and a teacher, spiritual teacher, whatever, I have to use what's available to me. And so I'm using the internet, and I'm using words. And I'm using my lovely log, dog, Jewel. Jewel, will you smile at the camera? Hey, come on. She knows that this thing's a camera for some reason, and I'm using my computer. So on that thought, it's almost 20 minutes. Everyday enlightenments, plural, everywhere, every day.
It's over 20 minutes. Hopefully, it'll still upload. So to you all, we're in this together. I'm here for you, and that's all I am. I'm not selling anything, promoting anything. Well, promoting enlightenment, although attraction rather than promotion. Right? If you've heard that term before, it's a 12-step term. I'm sober. And I'm experiencing the here and now Satori by following not true. My story is following a Buddhist path. Yours is your story. You don't need to practice Buddhism. Although, for me, it was the best doorway to the Dharma. The Dharma is absolute truth, absolute reality, all with initial capital letters, which is different than lowercase letters. Reality with a lowercase r and reality with a initial capital R mean two totally different things. The capitalization, initial caps, is to denote the transcendental. But all this, as the Buddha says, are merely signposts trying to help anyone along the path. We leave little signposts pointing the Buddha pointing at the moon. Don't worship me. Don't look at my finger. Look to that which my finger points. The moon, that is our destination figuratively speaking. That is the Dharma. And whether you're agnostic, atheist, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, nothing spiritual, not religious, or woke up on a desert island and, and never heard of these terms, absolute reality is what it is beyond semantics. Why pure consciousness exists. For myself, I'm eternally grateful for my teachers, Urgyan Sangharakshita, Buddhapalata, Manjuvajra, Dhammarati, Eckhart Tolle, Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, everybody throughout the years. Dr. McMillan, psychoanalyst. There's 84,000 Dharma doors, as they say, which is another way of saying the truth is everywhere. 84,000 back in the day was just as like saying a gazillion, a gugaplex, <laughs> infinite, an unimaginable number. Truth is everywhere. If you read the Transcendentalist Poets, Walt Whitman, Thoreau, Emerson, you'll glimpse the Dharma. And on that, I'm not going to worry about the clock. If this uploads, it uploads. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Sanghaya. 
Namo Nama Om Ha Hung Body, speech, and mind. And I got a little confused when I said earlier. Body is the Sangha. Om is the Sangha, the body. Ah is the Dharma, the speech. Hung is the heart, mind, the Chitta, the Buddha. Body, speech, and mind. I go for refuge to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, or the Sangha, the Dharma, and the Buddha. Anyhow, that is my true teaching. It's a silent smile emanating a universal loving kindness, compassion equanimity, sympathetic joy. All places, all times, seen, unseen, known and unknown, creatures big and small, fairies, pixies, gods and goddesses. There are gods and goddesses in Buddhism. They're just not above an enlightened human being. Our higher self is the higher power. For me, what it is to you, I'll leave to you. But if you awaken to every day enlightenments, pure consciousness, awaken to oneness, you realize, yes, all those words are semantics. They're signposts. Don't get too caught up in the words. Or the numbers as you're counting your breath. But do. Do it here and now. Thank you, everybody. Namaskar. And I'm not a big fan of using namaste. Namaskars. Technically more respectful, but it's so cliche. But in this instance, I'll use it for about the second time in my life because I mean it pure consciousness in me acknowledges the pure consciousness in you that we're all one so is Jewel but, but she's been waiting for me to catch up for a long time <laughs> she's so patient watch our little furry friends they have much to teach us and on that note I will see you soon.